everyone. Welcome to all our viewers across the world, our World Business Forum audience, and all our Chief Executive Magazine readers. I'm Martin Lindstrom, your co-host, along with my dear friend and the world's number one leadership coach, Marshall Goldsmith. Now, Marshall is a member of the Thinkers 50 Hall of Fame and has written some of the most iconic books out there, like What Got You Here Will Get You There and Mojo, How to Get It. But beside all those fancy credentials, I think more importantly, Marshall is just super unique. He's unique because he has an ability to connect with people and really make them feel special while also telling them a message which is important. I mean, I so much have to learn from Marshall on that one. So listen, Marshall, once again, I'm so glad that you're still hanging into this show. Well, let me say I am so honored to be here with my wonderful friend, Martin. Martin is so many accolades, one of the 100 most influential people in the world in Time Magazine. He is author of some spectacular books, including things like Biology and the Ministry of Common Sense. And you know what else? A good guy. Also, though, I think Martin is the most interesting human being I've ever met. He's had a fascinating life. You just read about the guy. I love his life. I love what he's doing. World's expert on branding number one, Martin. Thank you, Marshall. I mean, um, I'd have to blush ongoing here with all this stuff you were saying, but I have to tell you one thing. I think with the two guests we have on this show, once again, I'm going to let you down, right? Anyway, if you like this show, don't forget to press the like button or the follow button or the subscribe button. Now, I have to tell you one little thing. Today's show is all about chickens, or rather, uh, we'll use a lot of metaphors using chickens. Now, one of our guests will reveal why. So how do you get those chickens out of that cage I mentioned for you? Well, let's visit those chickens stuck in that cage for a second. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring on a little bit of an illustration on my screen right now. I'm just doing a drawing of four chicken cages seen from the top, all surrounding a little square. Now, this is what I've learned over the years working with companies around the world. I'm going to be a very nice to those chickens. I'll open the cage so they can go out in the beautiful green grass. Now, here's my question for all of you guys watching. Where would you place the corn in case you want to have these chickens leaving the cage? On your keyboard right now, share with me where would you place the corn? Because this is an extraordinary important question. The issue is that most people, I think Tom from Hickory right now is suggesting in the middle. Let's just try that for some. So Tom, this is in the middle. What is going to happen then? Well, if you take a look at chicken A, chicken B, and chicken C and D, well, what are they going to do? First of all, they'll look at that corn in the middle, and gosh, that's far away. My KPIs are not supporting it. And even worse, what if my manager, the crazy manager I have coming up with all those ideas is being fired? I look like an idiot. So what is Chicken A going to do, Tom? Well, he's going to look, or she is going to look at B, Chicken B, and basically just say, listen, what is Chicken B doing? Chicken B will look at Chicken C and Chicken C and Chicken D, and everyone will look at everyone. And what will they conclude? Let me go straight back into the cage again. This is really what I call the chicken cage syndrome. Because here's the issue. One thing I've learned is to break this down into what we call 90-day interventions, short-term conclusions. So instead of pressing that little corn down in the middle, place it just outside the chicken cage. Short enough distance for the chickens to grab it, feel an instant gratification, celebrate a success within the company. So everyone else can see, wow, if I change, in fact, the whole company will change. And then you can place another piece of corn getting closer and closer to the center of where you really want to go. Now, that's the 90-day interventions. And that's what we're going to talk a lot about all of these many minutes from now because having tried this approach hundreds of times i can tell you one thing it works but why does it work on today's show we have two guests and uh, which will tell you much more about what chicken teaches us about psychology safety psychological safety teamwork and talent marcel tell us more about our first guest our first guest is Margaret Heffernan, a wonderful person with a refreshing personality. In a sea of boring academics, she is certainly not boring. She has been the CEO of five companies. She's an 
author of six big big books, and she worked for 13 years with the BBC. She's been ranked as a top 100 media executive. I love her concept of willful blindness, which I just see so much in the real world. It's so refreshing to hear her talk about it. She's also had 8 million TED views, among other things, and one of her most famous TED shows is about super chicken. So Martin, we are so lucky to have Margaret with us today. We are welcome, Margaret. Listen, I'm just thinking about Margaret, before we sort of introduce you to the world of chickens, why don't we just play a video where you talk about chickens? It's much easier, right? Huh. Evolutionary biologist at Purdue University named William Muir studied chickens. He was interested in productivity. I think it's something that concerns all of us. But it's easy to measure in chickens because you just count the eggs. <laughs> he wanted to know what could make his chickens more productive, so he devised a beautiful experiment. Chickens live in groups, so first of all, he selected just an average flock, and he let it alone for six generations. But then he created a second group of the individually most productive chickens. You could call them super chickens. And he put them together in a super flock. And each generation, he selected only the most productive for breeding. After six generations had passed, what did he find? Well, the first group, the average group, was doing just fine. They were all plump and fully feathered, and egg production had increased dramatically. What about the second group? Well, all but three were dead. They'd pecked the rest to death. I love I love that. So, Margaret, what is the solution to the super chicken dilemma? Well, the solution to the super chicken dilemma lies in what happened to the average flock, which is the average flock did very, very well. And I think, you know, the moral of the story is that a lot of so-called management thinkers with a very, very loose understanding of Darwin used to think, well, if you create conditions in which everybody has to compete fiercely, then the best will rise to the top and you'll get this phenomenal productivity. And of course, what we've discovered over time is exactly what the super chicken experiment shows you, which is actually what happens is they just all kill each other. And we see this in corporate politics all the time. You see it in teams undermining other teams when they're both doing pitches. I mean, I think, you know, every time I tell that story, I get this kind of horrible laughter of recognition from the audience because they all know who the super chickens in their organizations are. Yeah.